Okay, so in this week, I'm talking about how to deal with your mental struggles. I want to talk about faith, and I'm going to tell you about a miracle, a straight up miracle that I saw that I witnessed of uh, somebody that was dead come to life. And uh, so let me get to it. So if you have a lot of struggle going on and you take the time, maybe you've never read the Bible, take some time maybe. I grew up, I wasn't going to church all the time growing up, and I didn't know much about uh, faith and the Bible and the story of God and Jesus. And so over time, I read one page a night before I went to bed. Sometimes I'd read more because it was something interesting, and I just tend to read two or three pages, four. Uh, that was about it until I got through the whole book. And there's a lot that I learned. And as a first responder and as somebody at my age, I've witnessed a lot of life come into this world and life come out of this world. So it's like a, a study guide to how to be a human being, a healthy human being in the Bible. So we're about out of time for the short. Click over to the rest of the, click on my channel and I'll do one more minute and tell you the rest. Okay, so if you're on the channel, not the short, let me tell you the rest of this video. Let me tell you this actual miracle of this man that died and came back to life in front of me with no medical care. So a firefighter paramedic rolling out on an ALS unit that day, call comes in for a syncopal episode and it, somebody passing out, but the man is conscious, patient's conscious, uh, it's time of the phone call. So they only dispatched out an ambulance, just, so it's just two of us. We arrive on scene, uh, somebody was out hiking, middle age, no medication, they're physically fit, they were a runner, they've had some issues with their knees, so now they've been doing some extensive walking and um, everything seems to be great. They do not want any care, but they do agree to assessment. We tell them, hey, I mean, there's gotta be some kind of reason you passed out. He says, ah, I, only, I was only out for a second or two. Family was with me. I probably just haven't been drinking enough. I'll be fine. But he agrees to an assessment. During the assessment, we got him hooked to the monitor. Everything looks perfect. I mean, this guy looks like the picture of health. Uh, everything's great. And while we're talking to him, his pulse starts dropping and look at the monitor and it's like, hey, you know, your pulse is getting a little bit low. And he says, yeah, it gets low sometimes, you know, because I have a low resting heart rate. I said, well, how low? And he says, ah, oh, resting in the 50s. Well, it's in the 50s and he's standing there talking to us and it's pretty warm outside and very quickly it goes from 50s down to 40s. He starts getting lightheaded. We assist him to the ground. He says, I feel like I'm gonna pass out and I'm holding his pulse at this time, holding his wrist, holding his pulse, feeling his pulse. And uh, he goes down to zero. Uh, a systole flatline dead all happens very quickly and at this point the, everything in the world advanced cardiac life support your training everything kicks in and says it's time to do CPR it's time to start an IV it's time to push up an epheron it's time to intubate him and breathe for him you know there's a lot of stuff that's about to start happening to help save this man's life but something inside me told me don't touch him uh, with your medical training just hold him just hold his hand hold his wrist like you're doing and don't let go and my partner went to lean over him to start cpr and i told him not to with my other hand I, I you know i told him no don't don't get off of him and uh don't touch him and i looked over at the family and i told the family they the family standing at his feet a uh, few family members with him including his wife and i looked over and i said he's gone into cardiac arrest normally we would start care right now but we're not going to we're just going to wait and they went from looking extremely concerned to, okay, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but they looked at me like, okay, I'm not sure what you're feeling, but I'm, I'm with you on this. I look back at him, I'm holding his wrist, and I can feel this feeling in me saying, just wait, just wait, he'll be back. Just, just give it a minute, he'll be back. I look at the monitor because my partner moved it by closer to his, his shoulder, by his head, his shoulder area. And I look at it, he's a systole. My partner's like, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing anything? Just wait. And um, I got my other hand, I, I still holding his pulse and I don't let go and his feeling doesn't go away. And after a couple minutes, this man just came back to life. His pulse returned and within a couple of seconds of feeling his pulse in my fingers, he looks at me, he just looks at me and starts talking. And absolute miracle. We transport him in, the doctor believed me because of the rapport, but the insurance company didn't. I had to uh, give him extensive information to prove what actually happened because they said people don't die, come back to life without medical care. You know, we're not gonna treat them. We're not gonna put a pacemaker in for preventative uh, future because that doesn't happen. I provided the proof, it happened, I was there. Miracles happen. Have some faith. If you're struggling, if you have a lot of stress, 
pick up the Bible, do some reading, and uh, keep your faith. And if you don't have any faith, maybe pick up a children's Bible and just read it. And start with that and work your way, uh, maybe into reading the Bible itself. Appreciate you watching uh, the channel. I appreciate the support. I want to try to bring more awareness to PTSD, more awareness to anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, suicide attempts, supporting each other this week, all about having, having some faith. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next week.